But one thing I want to speak about quickly to get on top of was the whole debacle that's happening with United at the moment. Um, I think most fans who have, you know, who've been paying attention are pretty frustrated with what's been going on in Man United because we've all we all don't we all don't have amnesia. We all remember that last season was maybe one of the worst seasons we've ever witnessed in modern day supporting of United, right? In the post Sirs Ferguson kind of era. Considering everything that kinda of went on in the season where we finished the performances, especially towards the end of the season, it was an absolute car crash of a season. And you would imagine that, you know, with those kind of seasons in the rear view, you'd want to kind of put your flag in the ground and try to basically prove that you're trying to do things differently you recognize your mistakes there's a big error did the did, 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 did. here's what we're doing differently and there's been no real change we felt like as fans um apart from the reshuffle of course what's happening in the boardroom level and with the managers and stuff we've not really seen anything to indicate that united are a different out outlet or a different outfit sorry we're a different football club that we've kind of recognized the errors of our ways and we're going to try to balance the commercial with the football in success right we're going to try to make it make sense in that way and it hasn't happened and um so far this pursuit we're doing of the moment with frankie de Jong seems to be one of the things that's really pissing people off because if you let go of a player like a marquee player like a paul pogba you would imagine one of the main things you'd want to do is want to kind of flex your muscles a big club and basically prove that you know big players come and go all the time at a club like United and you can go and maybe get somebody in like a Frankie de Jong who's maybe a little bit younger maybe who maybe might fit the club ethos and what we're trying to do a little bit better has a relationship with the pre with the new coach that we have in at the moment and just generally is somebody that you can maybe you know market as the quote-unquote replacement or the heir apparent to Paul Pogba as he leaves and that's one thing but as a United fan who's paying attention you would also agree that we don't only need one player. It wasn't only Paul Pogba that was the issue at United. We needed a whole bevy of football players, which doesn't include everyone that's leaving. Right? We think we've got loads of players who have actually ended up leaving in the end, right? Especially senior players, the Matters, the Lingards, the Pogbas and stuff, um, and the Cavani's and a few other people have left. But we've always needed probably five players. I think Ralph Ragnick, when he was going through his last couple of weeks at the club he said famously that we needed 10 players out of the club and probably 10 players in and quite soon after that he was relieved of his duties right so he could see where the club stands at those kind of things the club's not really known or may not it's not really known for signing more than three first team players we have a real aversion to kind of getting that many players in which is bizarre because the club also has this weird thing where if the players running and they contracted in their last year they automatically renew it because they view players as like an asset so it's very strange don't want to sign loads of players but also one don't want to let go of players very very bizarre but that aside this Franco de Jong pursuit is really starting to boil people's piss because what we're seeing now is what we've seen in previous seasons where United are concentrating on the marquee signing but they're also taking the eye off the prize which is the general overall squad balance and dynamic we don't have it at the moment we still have a pretty imbalanced and I would say ill-equipped defense the goalkeepers are they really up to par to have what kind of football uh, Ayrton Hag wants to play the central mid or midfield um, even if you sign Frankie De Jong's replacement for Pogba you still need to have a replacement or somebody that can sit as a six a replacement for Matic we don't have that at the moment we've lost Matic we've lost sorry we've lost uh, Mata we've lost Lingard who is replacing those players are they players from the youth team we don't really know nothing's been communicated either and then to make matters worse if that wasn't a clear indication of just how poorly we've run this story comes out courtesy of um, Sport Bible and it says as follows, May Night CEO meets fans in pub and talks on nightmare season. So not only are we run by or are we owned by some of the worst football owners, I would say, in the history of football in the Glazers, right? I'll say the Glazer ownership has to be one of the worst ownerships ever in modern football, especially considering how big of a club we are, especially considering how I would say on paper easy it is to generate money and income and i would say somewhat success on the football pitch with the club that you have at your disposal to fuck it up to this degree i think is a gross mismanagement it's the kind of thing that you should be taken to court for and definitely is for me a proof that they are one of the worst owners in the world so we don't even have it's not even we have one of, some of the worst owners in the world we also have some of the worst people operating the club in the world um and this richard arnold guy seems like he's no better than ed woodward absolute numpties the whole lot of them so for whatever reason our new CEO who took over from Ed Woodward, who, you know, Gary Neville famously said he's nothing like Ed Woodward. He's trying to get the football people in place, which to me just sounds like 
he doesn't want to take any responsibility would rather kind of pass it off to people somebody else because he knows it's been 10 years of failure so most likely it's not going to be under his tenure that we're suddenly going to be a success again so why put yourself on a chopping block when you can just get other people to kind of take the brunt of the football decision so this guy has now decided a great way to sort of quell the fan fears and to kind of get us back on song is to sit down with random fans in the fucking pub and talk about the inner goings on of the club and what can be done to fix it and it's just it's a nonsense it just beggars belief all of this stuff it really does but anyway, it says as follows the group of United supporters was, uh, was supposedly planning to protest outside the 51 year old's house which is a great thing so clearly these protests that everyone keeps telling us don't work um, especially the ones that are incredibly uncomfortable the ones that you go into the people's homes the ones where the fans don't turn to matches and don't buy tickets not the ones where they buy tickets and walk out no the ones where you don't buy tickets you don't buy merch these actually affect the club because somewhere along the line this protest got back to Richard Arnold and he got nervous and decided to kind of meet the protesters before they came to his house of course makes complete sense he's probably going to move off this so anyway um, however, after the news of the plans got to him, Arnold decided to meet the supporters at a local pub and they were to, um, they were in to talk through their anger and the situation the club is in. United finished the Premier League season with the worst ever points total and their highest ever goals conceded since the, concept, since the competition inception in 992. There's yet to be any signings this summer. While the window has only been open just over a week, the support frustration stems from the business that their rivals are doing. Of course, Harlow went to City. <coughs> Those are the two teams that are very top of Europe right now, but they're still improving. United fans will almost, will almost always place the blame on the Glazer family door. The owners of the club had Ed Woodward in charge for the better part of the last decade, and United have continuously wasted money through the poor signings. After purchasing the fans, a beer, after purchasing the fans and the pubs and drinks, Arnold sat down in the beer garden to listen to their views and explain the different areas where the club are trying to improve. One fan recorded part of the interaction. Arnold shared sentiments with the fans, um, with the United's poor operating and transfer window. He says as follows. We spent billions of pounds on players. We spent more than anyone in Europe. I'm not thrilled where we are. It doesn't sit easy with me. But what's, ha what's, but what's happened is what we've we fucking burned through cash. You can't, go, you can't go to our training ground and say, by the way, show me where that billion pound is. Because I don't think we've, we've spent, done it well with the money we've spent historically. I'm not here to defend Joe Glazer or the shareholders. They can speak for themselves. They don't ever speak to themselves. Arnold went on to mention the club needs investors in order to make progression. So this summer, the money the manager and the director has on the football he wants is there. For the future, he said, we are investing in a new stadium and that sort of stuff to do the latest, the greatest 250 million training ground. We've got to do something. We've got to get investors in, which is weird eh, to say they need investors in to improve the stadium. Anyway, continues. Um, he says here... I need that to do what I want for the club. I've got to have more cash than I have now. No club in the world has the money to build a new stadium without getting it from someone. You either borrow it from someone or invest it. With the supporters against the Glazers, Arnold spoke of the situation. He reportedly admitted that he expects he accepts that the protests against them will continue, but says that if the ownership was to change, the parties will need to see the club in good position. However, also adding that the previous campaign was a nightmare for him too. The money has got to come from somewhere. Uh, da, 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 da. So, I think it was an absolute horror show to have the CEO of Man United, a big club like Manchester United, sitting down in a pub talking to fans is diabolical. I'm also interested to see what somebody like a Rio Ferdinand would say because he was somebody that was quite vocal about Eric Ten Hag, sorry, about Ralph Ragnick basically airing out the club's public laundry, right? And he wasn't for that and he felt like the club should put a muzzle on him and he shouldn't be speaking to the public. I wonder what he will say about how Eric Richard Arnold is coming, going to pubs and talking to fans because he's, he's afraid of some protests outside of his home. Absolutely nonsense, man. Um, then there's a bit here about transfer strategy I'll quickly read. Da, 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 da. Um, he said the fans said that they weren't making him out to be a hero but the group perspective and came out to speak about things da, 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 what do you say uh what do you say about transfer window he said the money's our consideration who we want it's the manager wants him that's what we actually done to work looking at great player do you want to buy him okay cool this is a good point he made actually which was quite interesting he says money is not a consideration in who we want it's the manager wants if it's, the, it's that the manager wants him that they've actually done the work on looking if he's a great player. Do you want me buying the players? Doesn't that ring a bell? So obviously he's clearly kind of alluding to Ed Woodward. I don't think that's a great thing, personally, as a, as a professional, as a colleague, 
because essentially Richard Arnold was still working for the club when Eric, when Edward was there anyway. So it's not as if like he didn't know of him or his tenure. So the fact that Ed Woodward was able to basically do an inept job really, really poorly for the best part of 10 years without having his neck be on the chopping block in a serious way until towards the very, very bitter end when it was kind of obvious that he did nothing right for his entire time at the club is diabolical. And it also goes to show how terrible the owners Glazers are because it seems like they just let, they've, they've owned the club, they let whoever they trust run it, but the people who they let trust run it don't know what they're doing either. But they're also kind of impervious to asking for help or to get other people from the outside in to basically assist them. So it's an absolute shit show of a situation. The last part is taken uh, a reference to the... Uh, Frank and also, uh, yeah, so I don't like it. I think it's really diabolical. I think it's really awful. Um, I think in general, what I would like to see, like I've said plenty of times, I don't think Man United will be successful as a football club unless the Glazers leave, unless we change owners and we get new owners in who actually care about sporting um, success on the pitch as much as they do about commercial success off the pitch. We are never going to be the club that we once were. I don't think you can ever, 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 ever polish a turd. It just doesn't happen. No matter reshuffling, new managers, new structure, it's ever going to change things. The fact that essentially John Murtaugh's in a job and Raf Ragnick isn't at the club tells you everything about the club really because Raf Ragnick's overqualified for the role as a consultant. John Murtaugh is underqualified for the role he has as a director of football for a big club at Man United. Dan Fletcher should be no one in that role either, but he's somewhere there too. And the fact that those guys are basically running the club in terms of specking out the overall direction of the football club and where we're trying to go in accordance with the manager says everything you need to know about the football club. So the fact that the Glazers allow that to happen tells me that unless the Glazers leave, we're never going to be successful. It doesn't matter what coach we get. The only slight chance we have to be successful again under the Glazers is if we somehow manage to stumble upon Silas Ferguson reincarnated. Some new manager comes up who happens to be the, you know, the, you know, so it's focused on regen which i don't think is ever going to happen because you know that's a once in a lifetime sort of thing but if that happens fair enough but apart from that if we want to try to compete with all the other clubs in europe the other clubs in the prem winning league titles domestic cups european trophies we're not going to do it the glazers in charge we're just not they're just terrible they don't know what they're doing they are horrible owners they hire horribly um they fire poorly like everything's just bad about them everything there's nothing nothing good about their ownership at all zero probably one of the worst owners I've ever seen in football in my entire life and I can't wait until they're gone.